Hello viewers, SuperGT here. Welcome back to another round of kart racing here again at Buckmore Park. So, a couple of heats for you, a couple of races, three intensely fought battles, and then in the next video you'll see the finals, which were in, in many ways actually more intensely fought. So, here we go then, the first of three heats, starting started seventh, immediately up to fourth, as I was luckily on the inside, and uh, the outside of the, of the grid did not get a good run up to the line. So we gained lots of positions initially, and have found ourselves already in fourth. So over the course of the video you'll see three races, and uh, typically you'll start one of the races at the front, one in the middle, one at the back, and your grid style will average out. So it is, rough, it is fair uh, between everyone else. So up into third then, up the hill, Green Helmet looks for the space, not normally a space uh, or a corner that he'll go for a move. As we go into hairpin, or sorry, into turn one, not really a hairpin, and uh, this is hairpin one coming up now. I'm driver in the lead going very defensive very early in the race, he goes a little bit deep, and it's going to form a three abreast coming into the second hairpin. Look at this, I'm on the outside, which obviously is not the place to be. A couple of people up the inside, and I just managed to keep the momentum around the outside and keep fourth. So quite an interesting, intriguing race at this point here. Now something that is going to be quite a big theme of this video is the, the weather conditions changing throughout. So at this point here it's actually fairly dry, but you can see on the lens of the camera that there is uh, some condensation, some moisture forming. So it was a very cloudy day as you can see as you look up into the sky, very dark, very grey. And rain was forecast as we go up the inside into turn one. Are we going to be able to complete the job as we then come down into hairpin one and we're going to double lunge the two of them and get a double overtake into hairpin one nicely done so we move up into second place and the exterior shots as you can see here are done by alpha live top left of the screen and they do a really good job of covering the events as i get forced off into the wall the leader got it all out of shape and this is um, an example a very good example of the weather conditions changing and that's going to catch us out as you're driving into the the corners without knowing exactly how much grip is there and you're going so much wider now coming through Garda that turn through the left of center and uh, the amount of grip is much much less already so it might be quite difficult to see the rain but it certainly is raining as you can see the the flag on the left hand side there the yellow and the red flashing uh, flag on the electronic uh, digi flag that signifies uh, a wet surface so the rain is certainly coming down now as you, again you can see uh, plenty of moisture blocking our view on the GoPro camera so using the GoPro Hero 7 lots of people asking me which camera I'm using so I use the GoPro uh, Hero 7 and I wrap it around the chin part of the helmet with a vented GoPro cycling helmet strap roughly roughly those words but um, I'm sure if you googled that it would come up and you kind of wrap that around the chin part of the helmet. You see just how much understeer we're getting now. I'm turning in and waiting about 10 minutes to get any response from the front end of the car before it actually goes in. Struggling on the brakes and this is something that a lot of uh, people might have noticed. Anyone who's driven the Rotax uh, carts here in Club 100 compared to the TKMs which we used to use um, is actually a lot different on the brakes and you have to brake a lot earlier and this is something that I wasn't really adapting to quite quickly enough because I haven't really driven these new Rotax cars in the rain too much. Really, not much at all. And you see they're going really wide coming out of turn one. Joe Holmes behind, <laughs> way beyond the lines as they're uh, really all uh, getting caught out. As we lead the race on lap number five, and again here, look, look at this going really deep and cutting back for a nice straight exit, which is kind of the key uh, to success in these kind of conditions so the, the amount of grip is just really low at this point here and really struggling there as, as you get onto the paint if you go onto that red paint when it's wet honestly there is just zero grip absolutely zero grip you just can't turn at all so really struggling with the conditions still in the lead but under pressure from Joe Holmes who's gonna probably look to try to get past at any moment if he is right on our tail so the testing conditions here really um, making us go all over the all over the bloody place it's actually really really difficult to really get the cart to turn in um, and get it uh, kind of poised nicely on the exit of the corners so that's the end of lap number five just three laps to go at the beginning of lap number six 
coming back for that late apex. Into hairpin one, this is where I was really struggling. As you have to be so early, you can see the massive portion of oversteer as I just go into the corner a little bit too hot, almost going on completely. And then into hairpin two, Joe Holmes is just going to appear there. I'm going to try to get the cut back on him, and it almost works, but he just gets slightly better drive and gets ahead. So at this point here, really just need to keep on his tail as best I can and maybe try to go for um, a re overtake of him. So come down the hill, just really trying to find the grip in any place that you can. And um, it's not really being found at all. And you see there, another big mistake on the brakes. That was the one thing I just really couldn't quite adapt to quite quickly enough. As um, just sliding all over the place on the, on the deceleration phase into the corner. So down to second place. I have to look to try to get the pass done with just two laps left to go. He has got away a little bit, but the gaps are often a little bit bigger in in wet weather racing compared to dry weather. In dry weather you can normally follow very closely in the wet, it's a little bit harder to do that. So the gap there, uh, 0.4 seconds across the line at the end of uh, lap number six. And again, you can see there just how sideways to get that car up. Into hairpin one, out of hairpin one, into hairpin two. The line is to go really deep, cut back for that very late apex and a straight acceleration phase. I think he's just done that a little bit better there and opened up that gap a little bit more. So this is the corner here where I almost got sent to the shadow realm. In the dry, that is actually a very simple corner. The, the S's of left, the left and right. But when it becomes a little bit wet, it becomes a bit of a death trap. And I almost got sent into the wall earlier on in the race. And uh, could have been easily game over then. I was quite lucky that I kind of hit the, hit the wall square on and uh, just kind of bounced off and continued. But I could have easily have spun me around. I mean, at the time of it happening, I was definitely sure that I was going to spin around and uh, lose the race at that point. But luckily, he managed to keep go uh, keep going. Final lap then, can we go about getting this position back? It's been a, a fairly good race. I mean, the first couple of laps were very messy. And annoyingly, there is a massive droplet right in the center of the camera, which is quite frustrating. And uh, you can't really see my opponent because of that. But um, as we turn there, you can just about see exactly where he is. As we come out of hairpin two, half a lap left to go. He's gone through the S's, through the left, through the right, just using the curb as much as possible. And then my line through here, I, I adapt it slightly, try to keep it to the right-hand side here. There's lots of grip on the right-hand side there to turn into the left of Pillman's. And then you've got the right paddock here. So we are on him. I think um, I, I adapted uh, my, my braking and my lines, but it was just too late and um, we ran out of laps. Maybe if there was just two more laps, there could have been a chance, but I wasn't quick enough to adapt the way I was driving. And unfortunately, it meant I surrendered my uh, lead of the race and potential race win. We're going to cross the line in second though, which is still a decent result. We've got to chip away at those, the heats, really bring home some good results. So Joe Holmes with the victory, come home in second that time around. So heat number two, you see the continuation of the conditions getting worse and I'm actually I've got my wetsuit on you can see there now as we come across the line as you actually wasn't a good start I kind of got caught out there but still got the inside starting towards the back of the pack this time so this is my back start as we come through turn number one into hairpin one this is where things got a re they normally get really quite hectic through here as it does happen a little bit so already up into eighth place the space is still open on the left hand side, someone up the inside. I'm going to go deep here, try to cut back on someone. But unfortunately, if there's someone on the inside, you can't really take that big cut back line as they're kind of blocking it. So you do have to be wary of that. So someone very wide there, and I just managed to squeeze through that gap at the last moment. I think I might have got bumped in the rear end there. Couldn't quite tell. But um, that corner really is quite dangerous. And you'll see that in the next video, actually. It actually produces quite a lot of danger, that corner. As we come out of paddock in towards guard at the end of the lap, guy ahead goes for the move. Is he going to get it done? Yes, he is just about with a tiny bit of contact, but he gets through, and I'm going to follow him through as well. Up into seventh place, and they're getting the much better exit. You see there, just by going a little bit deeper and taking a faster exit, you can get lots of positions in the wet by getting uh, better exits instead of better entries. That's often the way that you overtake a lot of people. This time around, though, going up the inside, and not quite working. You see there again, the, the narrower you go, the less grip there is, and the kind of you just go straight on at most places. 
So you'd have to go kind of deep and wide early in the corner, then cut back to get that uh, good acceleration on the way out. That's often the better way to do it. And here I was going to go for the cut back, but then someone comes up me inside, unfortunately blocks me off. So it was a good move. And that is the, where, the thing you have to be very wary of, is people going for that cut back move. As we, as we perform it there to perfection, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Just take the wider line in and get the acceleration on the way out. And overtake two people there quite easily. Yellow flag coming down the hill into paddock, so something going on here. So I think it's the marshal there just moving the bollards back, which have no doubt been smashed about, about a million times. So at this point here, up into sixth place, obviously, finding refuge in my usual position. But coming out of centre, up the hill then towards Cafe Curve, end of lap number two, up into fifth already, and that's not bad given that this was my back start, started uh, officially as meant to start 17th. But um, I think the one side of the grid got such a bad start, they were already about 14th by the time I actually crossed the line. So coming through turn one, down towards hairpin one, early on the brakes. This guy's just going to come immediately back at me, and this is a really good example of there being much less grip on the inside. He just sails completely past me, and I retake him. He's going to do it again. He hasn't really learned his lesson. He goes up the inside, and just completely sails wide. I can get the better exit and retake that position. So the thing you need to do, really, if you want to go past someone, is just kind of... Um, it's kind of what Joe did in the first race. You put up the inside, but you just kind of block them. You just put your car... You position your car right next to them, so they can't really turn, um, rather than go, uh, trying to go flying past, and then at which point they can just cut you back and overtake you on the way out instead. So another move there. You see plenty of lean to really get the weight over the front of the car to get it to turn to get any action over those front uh, tyres. At this point here, sitting in third, end of lap number three, you see the gap to the guy ahead, maybe two or three seconds. At the end of this lap, um, end of lap four, it really came down quite quickly. So we're gonna look, look on board for a complete lap here as we try to get the job done on Paul Williams on lap number five. Going deep into here, cutting back, and you see how much better that line is there. Let the car pivot and then get a straight exit. Again, going very deep. We're going to try to get the move done here. It wasn't quite close enough. Still going to get that nice cut back line. As we then come through the S's. Treacherous corner. He's gone in really hot there. It's going to cost him on the way through the second apex. As you can see there, he gained a lot on the entry. I gained a lot on the way out. And here, I'm going to go over to the right hand side. Again, really wide there. In fact, completely off the track. His line is a little bit all over the place. And coming out of here, that is going to compromise him as coming up to Garda, which I consider to be the best overtaking opportunity on the lap. We are close enough to go for that move, put it up the inside, make sure he can't cut me back, and get the job done. Up into second place, with two laps left to go at the end of this one. So I think uh, Paul Williams' best chance really is just to go for an immediate reply at the beginning of lap six here. Um, that's probably his best chance of trying to beat me in this one before I can just get the hammer down a little bit and try to pull away. The leader you can see there just uh, around the corner, but it's gonna be too big a gap to try to reel in at this point here. So at the end of the race, at the end of lap seven, um, it's gonna be a second place. Uh, it was Daniel Taylor up in the lead. He drove really well and uh, wasn't really anywhere close to him in the end. It took too long to get through the pack. And ultimately we finished second again, which to be fair was not too bad a result given started towards the back okay so the third heat of three here we go then starting in sixth place this time so we had a sixth for 17th and seventh so none in the top five but and not too bad i suppose we can still fight through from here so immediately up into fifth place and you can see again the change in the weather conditions as the track is beginning to dry it's, it's sort of this half half dry half wet awkward stage at this point here up the inside we go into hairpin two and we'll get the job done up into fourth started sixth up to fourth already through here flat out now so it is quite a scary daunting proposition coming through the, some of these corners not knowing exactly what conditions you're going to be faced with because you can try to go really quick and that's a very aggressive move it must be said slamming up the inside forza style we get the job done though it, we'll see if that's going to be called as a penalty or not as we move up into third place through Cafe Curve, the final corner on the lap, and the, uh, across the line we go. Going to look for the move then into turn number one. This is a kind of the block pass 
you want about just make sure they can't cut you back and he hasn't done that the leader already David Whitehouse he's pulled out at the beginning of that lap it was 2.2 seconds so it's a rough it's over two seconds at this point so a massive gap already developed uh, developed at the start of this race and you know that's entirely possible if you can just get your head down from the front of the pack whilst everyone is fighting as if they're in a in a Forza lobby uh, or Forza Horizon lobby then you can quite easily pull out a gap whilst everyone is fighting a lot now this is the thing this is the key part of the of the race the fact that he was still unsure about the line into into heaven one you see how, just how different that line is compared to previous races I was taking pretty much the normal racing line it was just that there was a tiny wet patch or damp patch on the apex but it was actually okay to take and I don't think he quite knew that that was actually possible you see how wide he's going and I noticed that at every lap I was gaining exactly on that corner every time I wasn't gaining too much elsewhere but just on that one corner I was gaining maybe a few temps or, a little, or maybe half a second every lap just from that alone so at this point here the gap is definitely coming down and there's definitely a chance of going for this race victory uh, something I didn't think would be possible after getting through to second place because that gap was so big and it didn't seem to be I didn't seem to be gaining too much at the beginning but at this point here uh, I can see that he's already looking behind he def he's definitely aware that he's going to have a challenge on, on his hands in these last couple of laps so lap 6 now two laps to go can we get the job done uh, before the end of the race in fact I think there's actually going to be more laps than that I think there's actually going to be two more laps after this one so actually, um, so a bit more time for me to try to catch up, and definitely we're still gaining again. I think he's actually realised now his line through hairpin one was actually a bit better. So I'm not actually going to gain quite as much, but I'm still going to gain slightly. So it's definitely still the chance going for that race win. You see just how much the, uh, the conditions have changed. So earlier in uh, some of the earlier races, there's almost no grip at all, especially when on the, when you go on the red paint which is not advisable but uh, by this point plenty of grip um, through most of the circuit it's just these top couple of corners which don't dry out as quick um, hair, um, turn one here hairpin one hairpin two they normally this the last corners to dry out around this track so you see there now he's, he's learned the line through hairpin one so he, he's actually adapted his line so we have uh, two laps to go after this one now so I've got my lap counter all out of shape so right on his tail, we have a chance. We definitely have the chance of going for the win. But it's always quite a different proposition of trying to get past someone if they if they want to go fully defensive. And you see here, move fully over to the right. No way through there at all. So it's going to be a hard-fought battle to try to get this win. It's not going to be something I can just grab quite easily. He's going to defend it with all his life. So coming through ca uh, Cafe Curve, over the line we go, fully defensive. I'm going to go out to the left-hand side. I tried to get the cut back on him. Always looking for that cut back, and I didn't quite get it. There's still a little bit too much um, dampness on the Alps, or sorry, on the inside of the exit of that corner, and I just kind of slid out and couldn't quite go for the move. So we're going to have to uh, wait again, and it's going to be on lap nine, the, the last lap, the next lap, where we're going to really get a good chance. I'm going to try maybe to get it into guard at the bottom of the lip of the uh, bottom of the hill here. So getting really close through the sequence down the hill. Not quite close enough here to go for the move. He doesn't defend it. He knows that wasn't quite close enough. But we still have one more shot. We have one more lap to really go for this move. He made a bit of a mistake there. Again, looks behind. I think he knew that he made a little bit of a mistake. I'm going to force him narrow as much as possible to force him onto the wetter patch of the circuit. And you can see they're just getting the car back on him. You see just how little grip he had as he went narrow through that corner he went for the defensive line but unfortunately it didn't quite work out it's quite a difficult thing to manage because if you go wide which is the better wet line you open up the inside and the opportunity for the guy to lunge you but uh, on this occasion he went narrow and it didn't really pay off for him at all so into the lead with half a lap left to go and we're going to be able to hopefully see out this race from here to the end which is barely two corners more to go but that is going to wrap up this one. I do hope you've enjoyed it as always. Let me know your thoughts. There will be a second video which shows you the two finals. So these are just the heats. There's finals to follow. And the finals are really close for. So do look out for those. Let me know your thoughts on the video. I do hope you enjoyed it as always. But that's it from this one. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Bye.